Hey everybody, welcome to this month's supplement training. Dr. Kidd and I are going to talk about immunity and uh, some of the new products we have to support that. And I just want to say a couple of words first. My goodness, we are seven months into this thing. And I remember the day it started for me. So The End of Mental Illness, my new book, came out March 3rd. And I was running around the country for public television and the new book. And I went to Tampa Bay, Florida. First case of COVID-19 was reported the day I got there. And I'm like, huh, you know, the powers that be said it's no big thing. Um, and then I went to Atlanta and there was first case in Atlanta. Um, and I'm like, huh. And then I went home, Southern California. Uh, but then March 10th, I was in my bathroom getting ready to go to the airport to the John Wayne Airport, because I was flying to New York. The Mel Robbins show was doing, that's a nationally syndicated television show. Mel had come to our New York clinic and got scanned. And the whole television show was going to be about the end of mental illness and Mel's mental health journey and her scans. And I was so excited because, you know, if, if you're going to get the message out to the world, you have to have media. And so this is a big media hit for us. But I'm nervous about getting on a metal, a metal tube plane with COVID-19. I'm like not thrilled about it, but I'm a worker and the work needed me. But I'm in my bathroom and I get a phone call from the producer who I dearly love. She was just really great. Said, don't come. They're closing the studio. And that was the night the pandemic became real to me. And I actually went on Facebook Live that night. It was like the first night of 70 of them in a row. And I wrote a note to myself mental hygiene is just as important as washing your hands. We need to disinfect our thoughts and not let the ants, the automatic negative thoughts, steal our minds. And who knew, I mean, we sort of knew, the pandemic, the murder of George Floyd, the subsequent societal pandemonium, the political division, would all work together to trash our immune system. Because one of the things that damages your immune system is being exposed to chronic, unremitting stress. And so many of you are like me, and that you experience chronic remitting stress to um, experience what we've experienced. And, and the part of the people who will survive and thrive during this time, it's a term I've thought about for decades now, and it's cognitive flexibility that if you can adapt, if you can roll with the things that happen, um, you're so much more likely to thrive during this historically stressful time um, than those who are fighting the mask mandates, the political outcomes, and so on. And that's not a political statement. I just have to tell you, my immunity has been served by the serenity prayer. 
And some of you know what that is. You don't have to be an AA to know that it's God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And you need serotonin in your brain in order to be flexible. That when you're not flexible, um, it's often from a deficiency in serotonin that makes the bad thoughts loop in your head. And so um, boosting your immunity in large part comes from a number of things we're going to talk about today, knowing and optimizing your vitamin D level, having enough zinc and vitamin C. But but your biggest defense against COVID-19 is the health of your brain. It is the decisions that you make. And I often think of, you know, people who are successful in life They've consistently made better decisions than people who are not successful in life. And and you just look around society, and and I just can't help thinking of insane decisions. And Saturday night, there was an insane decision made by thousands of Notre Dame students. I don't know if you guys saw. I caught the end of the Notre Dame Uh, Clemson game, you know, the number one team in the country playing in Notre Dame against the number four team in the country. And I don't watch much football just because it's a bad brain sport. But I was interested. And as I watched Notre Dame win at the end of the game, and then I saw literally thousands of Notre Dame students jump over the stands onto the field and, the, and, and I'm like, these are stupid people. <laughs> it's a pandemic. Why would you ever give the virus that kind of root in, in these people's lives? I was just horrified. And so your best defense against COVID-19 is the level of the decisions that you make. And with that, I'm going to introduce you to my friend, uh, my brother, really, Dr. Paris Kidd, who's the chief science officer at BrainMD, who's our formulator, who's our teacher, who makes sure the quality is right in everything we do. Um, I adore him. And he is going to talk to you about boosting your immunity and the role brain md can play that in your lives so paris you're up my friend thank you daniel and i want to start by thanking uh thanking daniel and jim springer for their leadership of brain md and i want to also thank the entire team for helping us to um, develop these products and get them into circulation and um a special shout out to Elle for her assistance with the graphics and to Stephanie and Jeff for organizing this event. As the, as the presentation moves along, uh, you can send questions and, uh, and we'll, um, we'll record the questions and then at the end, I will produce answers and add them to um, the slide collection so that you can get the answers as a Q&A um, at the end of the um, slides. So what is immunity? I thought about that really, really hard. And uh, what I came up with as a sort of a core definition is maintaining the body's structural and functional integrity by eliminating all foreign antigens, that is objects perceived as not self, as not part of the body. And foreign antigens include, uh, though there can be lots of others, uh, dust, pollen, 
air, water, and soil pollutants, whether coming from smoke of any kind, including uh, um, tobacco smoke, uh, vaping, um, vehicle exhaust, um, any sorts of aerosols, manufacturing, plant emissions, pesticides and herbicides, uh, glutens, food additives, poorly digested food particles, uh, molds, and other um, fungal spores, viruses, bacteria, parasites. Um, <clears throat> molecules that are made by the body, but which are reacted with by pollutants and other toxins, and then go through shape changes that make them seem foreign to the immune system. Um, cells of the body that have abnormal surface patterns, and the immune system carries out most of its judgment by feeling along the surface of the object. So it's the immune cells feel along three-dimensionally, and then make a judgment as to whether that particular particle is, is self or non-self. And so along with all of these, there's anything else that the immune system perceives as not belonging to the body. So the main organs of the immune system then are <clears throat> the bone marrow, which makes B cells, T cells, killer cells, and other types of cells that populate the various tissues. And by the way, the, the spectrum and variety of immune cells is really huge. Um, there's on the order of one and a quarter trillion or so distributed through all of the organs. Um, these organs are the main ones that um, manage immunity, but every organ participates in its own way uh, in supporting healthy immune function. So the thymus then manages the maturation of the T cells. The spleen uh, is supplied by blood, which brings um, um, dead and dying blood cells that the spleen recycles. And the spleen is also a site where the many types of immune cells meet and in their own ways have conferences where they compare notes, they compare their records of antigens that they detected, and they um, proceed to make decisions as to whether or not to take further action. The lymph nodes are in some ways similar to the spleen, um, but they actually um, pick up uh, uh, fluid that's coming from the tissues. So they're not directly supplied by blood. So the lymph vessels pick up fluid from the tissues, uh, which can have all sorts of stuff in it. And that fluid drains into the lymph nodes, which then um, um, house and, and nurture all sorts of immune cells to enable them to compare their antigen records again and to help to mount an immune response as appropriate. And the small intestine uh, lining has little punctate spots called Peyer's patches where immune cells actually penetrate the lining and, and extend into the gut contents. And those immune cells sample the gut contents as they go by. There are even immune cells that um, hang out along the lining and also do monitoring of the gut contents. And in a highly simplified manner, I wanna just take you through real quickly um, how the immune cells um, function. So, so we have then this um, security force that patrols all of our tissues, uh, including all the solid tissues, even the bone, and uh, also circulates with the blood and with the lymph. But the, the outposts, uh, the cells that are in the furthest outposts away from the immune organs are what I call guard cells. And they have many different technical names, macrophages, dendritic cells, microglia, 
depending on where they're located, but they're basically doing the same thing. They are on the watch for foreign particles. So they're continually sampling the areas around them. And every tissue then has a complement of guard cells, which, which live within the tissue. And uh, as they pick up uh, foreign antigens, uh, they can get to a point where they, a threshold is exceeded and then they will migrate out of the tissue usually and go to uh, a lymph node, uh, most typically, where they encounter a T lymphocyte. And there, they present their ID to the T lymphocyte. So on their surface is a pattern that says to the T lymphocyte, I am self, I am one of the security force, but look what I found. And then the guard cell also presents the foreign antigen on its surface. So it has internalized the antigen, brought the antigen to the T cell, and put the antigen on its surface and said, you know, this seems foreign to me. What do you think? And the T cells have been programmed to recognize millions, literally millions of different types of antigens. And uh, if they judge that this antigen is foreign, they pass signals over to killer cells and the killer cells then um, either uh, destroy that particle immediately, or uh, they will then um, do further ID on those particles. So the killer cells then are patrolling, and once they become activated, they're uh, checking everything around them and anything that seems foreign, they will destroy. On the other side, of the mix, um, the T cells can also activate B cells, B lymphocytes, which make antibodies. And so <clears throat> they stimulate other B cells to produce antibodies, which are specifically directed against that particular antigen. And the antibodies go into the circulation and um, bind to any cells or any particles that carry that foreign antigen and mark it for destruction. Destruction by the, any of the various types of killer cells. And then longer term, after an immune response has been mounted and um, after the immune system passes a certain threshold of seeing this set of antigens as a real threat, then memory uh, cells are made, uh, which, um, which actually program the structure of that antigen into their DNA. And months or years later, they can um, recognize that antigen if it shows up again and help to mount immune response against it. So these are the main elements of the immune system. Incredibly simplified, but uh, one point I wanna make from this is that the mobile cells of the immune system are the ones doing the really heavy lifting. And as part of what they do, they, they have to be very well supplied with nutrients because um, they're continually having to make new, uh, new backup um, uh, cells, cell populations, and they have to be uh, mobile, which demands extra energy and therefore extra amounts of nutrients. Now, <clears throat> for a long time, it was thought that the brain didn't have immune cells and didn't have an immune system, but it turns out that it does. Um, it has quite a high population of, of guard cells, which in the brain are called microglia, if anybody out there really cares. Um, I sort of like it, actually. Um, these are about 10% of all the cells in the brain. And these are the light colored blue cells in this illustration. So this illustration is made by actually um, processing and staining brain tissue. Um, the, the fuchsia colored um, cells are nerve cells. And you can see that the blue cells are sort of 
extended throughout, they ramify through the nerve cell network and uh, they, they have these long processes. They're actually extending and moving around these processes and they're, th those processes are touching nerve cells for on the average five minutes out of each hour, constantly feeling around, constantly, um, constantly examining the surfaces of the cells around them to decide whether there are foreign antigens present. And so any one, any one brain guard cell can have quite a spread of uh, volume um, within the brain tissue. So I made an educated guess, for example, that, that all of that could be one cell. And so, um, so there's roughly maybe 18 billion of them or so in the brain. So then you have the killer cells and the killer cells are potentially um, very aggressive. They do their job. Uh, once they uh, come in contact with a cell or um, something like a cell, anything that um, is a foreign particle, uh, they, they feel around for ID. And there's one class of killer cells that if they don't find ID, they immediately destroy the target cell. So they put out processes. So the killer cell would be the one on the lower left there. They put out those processes that extend to the target cell and release proteins that actually make holes in the surface of the target cell and cause the contents of the target cell to leak out, thereby destroying it. Then you have other killer cells that are more sophisticated. They're programmed to look for particular antigens on a cell surface. And when they see that particular antigen on the target cell, they say, okay, that's a bad cell, it's gotta go. And they use similar mechanisms to destroy it. But perhaps the ones that fascinate me the most are the phagocytes. Um, phagocyte comes from the Greek um, eating cell or consuming cell. And these cells, circulate with the blood usually. And then once an alarm is raised, they go out of the blood vessels into the tissues and they look for foreign antigens, whether those be bacteria, viruses, abnormal cells, um, anything else foreign like asbestos fibers, for example, or cigarette smoke particles or maybe um, partly undigested food particles that um, got into the circulation and found their way into the tissues. And so these cells pick up those foreign bodies, which in this diagram are represented in gold, and they pull them in, they literally devour them, pull them into um, a bubble um, bounded by a cell membrane system, and into that bubble, they, they release digestive enzymes, which break down the foreign body and eventually um, um, release most of it as um, destroyed material, which should be at the lower right. However, in this process, the phagocytes also um, pick up antigens and put those antigens on their surfaces and then they communicate with the T cells and, and say, see, I just killed some of these things and there may be more of them out there. So maybe we need to call more phagocytes in or maybe we need to mobilize um, more killer cells or whatever it takes. And these phagocytes kill by means of free radicals. So they first release very reactive um, products made from um, chlorine, bromine, um, other types of um, highly reactive substances which damage or immobilize the target before they can then devour them. And because they're um, literally swimming in a sea of free radicals, they have to have very, very high levels of antioxidants. And the main antioxidant on which they rely is vitamin C. More on that later. 
No, vitamin C is one of the vitamins that's lacking in the American diet. So the United States government does um, ongoing surveys uh, of um, the, the dietary profiles of the American people. And academics take the raw data and process and publish the data. And the most recent data suggests that over 93% of Americans aren't getting enough vitamin D, over 90% aren't getting sufficient omega-3s, over 90% aren't getting enough vitamin E, 54% not enough magnesium, 37% not enough C, 45% not enough A, 31% not enough K, 12% not enough B6, 10% not enough zinc, and over 10% not enough folate. And this is with um, a very soft measure of what would be sufficient. If we would look at measures that are closer to optimal for immunity, then there would be even more Americans not getting sufficient amounts of multiple um, arrays of these nutrients. And what do these various nutrients do for immunity? Well, just in, in very brief um, thumbnail summary, vitamin D regulates numerous immune activities. The omega-3s help to ensure healthy inflammatory balance. Vitamin E protects cells against self-destruction. Um, so <clears throat> vitamin E is um, a cell membrane antioxidant. So it's located in the outer um, um, lining of <clears throat> all our cells and it works in concert with vitamin C to make sure that uh, cells are not being destroyed either by free radicals that they release or free radicals that they produce internally or by free radicals coming from the outside environment as from vaping, for example. Uh, <clears throat> vitamin A maintains the epithelial barriers. So the nose, mouth, lungs, digestive tract, all the orifices have linings, thin, thin continuous cell linings, and vitamin A helps to keep those sealed. So vitamin A, for example, is also very important for maintaining the seal of the linings of the stomach and intestines um, and helping to keep um, particles from getting out of the gut contents and getting into the blood. Vitamin K supports immunity by making sure that calcium doesn't overactivate the immune system. Vitamin B6 is very important for all of the um, proliferative activity of the immune system, continually having to make new cells and produce antibodies. Uh, zinc is important for um, production and maturation of T cells in the thymus for killer cell activity. And since zinc is required for the functioning of at least 2,000 different proteins, zinc is, is all over the immune um, map, all over the immune system story. And folate, uh, similarly to B6 in a way, is required for the production and maturation of all the different cell types of the immune system. So <clears throat> vitamins and minerals then are, as they are with all of our 30 trillion cells, they're fundamentally important um, to the functioning, to the production and functioning and uh, spectrum of activities of all our cells. But the immune cells actually, um, particularly the mobile immune cells, have to be making more energy. They have to be more busy. They have to be continually repairing um, damage that they do to themselves. Uh, and <clears throat> they're operating sometimes in very hostile environments um, where there's all sorts of toxic stuff around them. And uh, in some cases, the the antigenic material fights back, like amoebas, for example, are very big cells and amoebas themselves will release free radicals and take on, take on phagocytes and killer cells uh, in, in their own territory. So <clears throat> the immune system, uh, as a rule, has a substantially higher need for all sorts of nutrients. And so this is why I work very hard to convince everyone, 
everyone out there that they really should be taking a multiple because um, whether due to um, limitations of your diet, even though you may think you have an excellent diet, um, you may have genetic mutations, you may have um, changes at certain sites in your DNA called polymorphisms uh, that um, cause some of your enzyme systems to be less efficient and therefore to need higher levels of certain nutrients. And therefore, what may be sufficient for one person may not be sufficient for some particular enzyme system that you have. So I talk about um, a really well-made, scientifically formulated multiple as being nutritional health insurance. And Neurovite Plus from BrainMD is arguably the best multiple available anywhere in the world. It has 27 nutraceutical grade vitamins and minerals, including um, newly classified um, vitamin type substances like choline, lutein, and zeaxanthin. It has two what are called conditionally essential nutrients. That is nutrients that the body needs to make some amount of. We get some from the foods, but we need to make additional amounts. And so it supplies substantial amounts of coenzyme Q10 and alpha lipoic acid. It has clinically proven brain nutrients such as phosphatidylserine and acetylcarnitine. It has eight fruit and vegetable concentrates. It has five digestive enzymes and it doesn't have junk in it. So, so most of the multiples you will find out there have magnesium oxide, which is hardly at all absorbed. So if you purchase a multiple with magnesium oxide, chances are you're not getting anywhere near the amount of magnesium that it says um, on the label. Um, we don't put beta carotene in Neurovite Plus because some ethnic groups have trouble to convert beta carotene to vitamin A. Instead, we put vitamin A as vitamin A. We don't use folic acid because it's a manufactured substance which doesn't occur in nature and it can gunk up the body's natural folate system. Instead, we use uh, methylfolate, which is pre-activated folate, is excellently absorbed and goes right to work once it's absorbed. Um, we don't use cyanocobalamin for vitamin B12 because it contains cyanide and uh, it poses a risk to certain populations like smokers, for example, and uh, women taking certain types of birth control pills. Instead, we use methyl vitamin B12, uh, which is um, the most active B12 in the body and is excellently absorbed. And at the level we have it in Neurovite Plus, there's no need to go to the physician to get B12 shots. So this is excellent nutritional health insurance. And it's very hard for any additional immune systems enhancing supplement to really um, positively affect the immune system if the body is not well supplied with these nuts and bolts for immune function. Vitamin C, um, humble vitamin C, its deficiency is still a problem. Surveys indicate almost one in two Americans aren't getting sufficient vitamin C from their diet. Um, the 37% figure I gave you before um, is for people who are um, not only consuming their foods, but also taking getting foods fortified with vitamin C. So a more conservative estimate would be on the order of 46% of Americans not getting enough vitamin C. And by the way, it takes a lot of orange juice to supply anywhere near the minimal allowance of vitamin C. And that means you get lots and lots of sugar um, along with the vitamin C. So cases of classic vitamin C deficiency, scurvy, which has been known for hundreds of years, cases of scurvy are still being diagnosed in the United States. The immune system, the brain and the adrenals all require much higher levels of vitamin C than the other organs. As I mentioned earlier, the mobile immune cells, um, whether they're um, generating free radicals on their own or whether they're being exposed to a toxic environment, need 
high levels of vitamin C to be protected against destruction. The people who are most at risk of vitamin C deficiency are those under long-term stress, smokers, the elderly, people on TV dinner diets, nursing home residents, picky eaters, including children who might have problems with learning or behavior or um, um, responding to um, parents' guidance, etc. cetera, um, people on dialysis, people who are critically ill, and people who are poor, people who are poor and who may live in food deserts and aren't getting um, anywhere near um, the profile of foods that would supply them with any vitamin C. Low levels of vitamin C are associated with impaired immunity, fatigue, low mood, anxiousness, poor cognition, and then, you know, the gums can start coming apart and uh, the teeth can start falling out. You can get um, um, bleeding under the skin, bleeding around um, the hair roots, et cetera, all kinds of terrible things. And bottom line with vitamin C is that if you really want to have full immune support from vitamin C, you need to be taking at least one to two grams per day, 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams. And this also applies to children. So a little while back, we released, um, with the help of Jim Springer, who brought it to our attention, this liquid vitamin C, which is in a liposomal form and makes for um, much, much better absorption. Um, so by taking Neuro C, um, one tablespoon supplies a full 1,000 milligrams. It tastes incredibly, incredibly pleasant. And uh, if you can take two tablespoons a day, um, preferably with food, but not necessarily, um, it's not mandatory that it be with food, then you're getting a really good allowance of vitamin C. So now let's talk about our newest uh, immune product, Smart Mushrooms. Um, again, Jim Springer um, helped us to um, discover a really excellent source um, for these mushrooms uh, grown under um, aseptic sterile conditions um, in a state-of-the-art plant in the US on, on oat that is gluten-free and just really, really um, very, very high quality powders, certified organic, um, GMO free, um, paleo friendly, vegan, all of that. Um, six medicinal mushrooms revered for between hundreds to thousands of years. Um, carefully selected to enhance not only immunity, but also mental performance. And Mushrooms are fungi, they're not plants. They are um, a different category of living thing um, that grow on already formed um, um, biological materials. And they make glucans, which is a type of fiber that is antioxidant, uh, promotes healthy, uh, microbial balance in the gut because it's a it's a food for our friendly gut bacteria and enhances um, a whole range of responsiveness of the immune system. So these glucans are are biologically really quite um, fascinating um, for their for their complexity really. Um, at the top right is the most um, primary structure of the glucans. These are, they have glucose type molecules that are joined together in chains and which have branches going out along the side. So the primary structure is a kind of glucose polymer, which is where the term glucan comes from. But these can have thousands of glucose molecules. And then on the lower right, um, these molecules these chains of um, glucose polymers can be arranged in helices. In this case, this is a kind of triple helix, um, which, which uh, goes down into, into the diagram and which is three-dimensional and has um, quite a complex shape. 
And then on the far left is glucans plugged onto a core of proteins, uh, which um, then makes for a very, very large molecule with uh, a very, very complex three-dimensional pattern. So these basically serve as antigens to our immune system. But they do not um, cause a full-blown immune response. It seems that um, because humans co-evolved with mushrooms, uh, we have been consuming them probably for millions of years, uh, as at least for hundreds of thousands of years as Homo sapiens. And so the human immune system and the mushroom glucans have probably evolved a kind of um, mutually um, beneficial arrangement uh, whereby um, they stimulate um, the immune system to, uh, to be more vigilant without necessarily fully destroying the glucans. So the first mushroom I want to talk about is lion's mane. And you can see that, you can see why it's called lion's mane. And uh, this mushroom has been um, part of traditional Chinese medicine for over a thousand years. It contains substances which can increase the levels of nerve growth factor in the brain. Um, An NGF nerve growth factor helps to maintain um, healthy um, structure and function of the brain circuitry. And we know that when there is damage to our circuitry um, in the healthy brain, nerve growth factor is produced and helps to um, facilitate healing and replacement of circuitry, et cetera. And in a randomized uh, clinical trial, placebo controlled, lion's mane improved cognitive function in men and women over the age of 50. In, in another randomized controlled trial, uh, in men over the age of 50 who had what is called mild cognitive impairment, which actually is not at all mild and makes them vulnerable to, to puts them at higher risk for subsequent severe cognitive decline, um, lion's mane also improve cognitive function. And we also have other clinical trials of a more preliminary nature that suggest lion's mane also may be able to improve mood, anxiousness, and even quality of sleep. And lion's mane, besides being beneficial to the brain, also has a very high content of glucans, which um, were found to improve stomach inflammatory balance in a randomized controlled trial all the way back in 1985. So lion's mane is the main um, brain-oriented mushroom in this mix. We have a full 1,000 milligrams uh, in the mix. And this is very important because it's very hard to get a pure lion's mane preparation. A lot of mushroom products that are labeled lion's mane are actually blends of lion's mane with other mushrooms. So we were able to get the pure lion's mane, and to to put a full 1,000 milligrams into this preparation per serving, per daily serving. Then there's reishi, the mushroom of immortality. Um, This is one mushroom where uh, if if someone would find it in the the forest, whether they would be rich or poor, they would dance for joy. Um, The rich people would dance for joy because they would believe that this would give them Um, long life and sexual potency um, forever. And the poor people could dance because they would know that if they could sell it to a rich person, they could get a lot of money for it. So reishi has high levels of glucans, but also substances called triterpenes that also have immune benefits. And there have been a number of clinical trials with reishi. And when the pooled data from the trials were put together and put through what we call a meta-analysis, that is a pooled analysis of the data, Um, the conclusion was that reishi can enhance T helper cells and other categories of T cells. 
The triterpenes in reishi also promote healthy inflammatory response. And the terpenes, the triterpenes in animal studies have been found to enhance both nerve growth factor and another brain growth factor called BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor. And BDNF is known to be also very, very important for maintaining the brain circuitry. Um, we know that BDNF can be increased um, via consistent aerobic exercise, but it's hard to find um, dietary supplement ingredients that actually increase BDNF. So it seems that reishi also has potential for brain benefits. And let me also say that any of these mushrooms that improve immunity are also contributing to brain health because the brain, just like any other organ, has to be continually defending itself against invasions by foreign antigens and against um, um, conversions of healthy cells to abnormal cells. And actually, the, the immune cells that I showed you, those blue cells that I showed you, uh, those blue stain cells, the microglia, participate also in tidying up synapses. When synapses have become damaged or destroyed, they, they pick up the broken bits, and it's believed that they also contribute in a positive way to reforming and regeneration of healthy synapses. And experimentally then, reishi also improves the maturation of human nerve cells in culture. Shiitake tastes great when you cook it, also around for more than 2,000 years, contains a variety of glucans, but especially lentinan, which um, has been found to increase B cell numbers in a clinical trial, in a randomized trial. And lentinan is known to actually bind to what are called receptors, which are specific um, antennae on the surfaces of immune cells that are looking for particular antigens. And instead of um, lentinan stimulating its own destruction, it actually stimulates immune cells to, to up their game, to enhance their activity to enhance their vigilance looking for truly foreign antigens. So the mushroom glucans are not seen as foreign. Um, they're seen as something in between foreign and friendly, um, but they definitely have this positive enhancing effect on immunity. And shiitake also carries ergothionine, which is a very interesting food antioxidant because our intestinal lining has a special protein transporter that looks for ET and delivers it into the blood to go to the tissues. And shiitake also may help to maintain cholesterol and triglyceride levels. Cordyceps um, has a colorful history, has near mythic status in the East. It contains not only glucans, but also substances called nucleosides, among which is adenosine, which is used to make ATP. And ATP is the main building block, uh, the main um, molecule in which our energy is encapsulated. So we use ATP as our energy currency. And cordyceps, cordyceps have been found in clinical trials to be really, really good for fighting fatigue. Besides improving um, natural killer cell activity, it supports liver and kidney health and improves circulatory health. Agaricus is is closely related to the common button food mushroom and to um, portobello mushrooms. And it originally came from Brazil, but it has now become accepted in Asian countries. It's widely used there, ha is very high in glucans and um, has a range of immune stimulating effects. And then turkey tail, I have a long association with, I was telling my grandkids this weekend, we have wild turkeys in our area and I was telling my grandkids that I'm going to be giving a talk about mushrooms and um, I'm going to mention the turkey tail mushroom because it really does look almost exactly like a turkey tail. And this mushroom has been the most um, intensively researched for immunity. It has two main um, glucans that have been made into concentrates, PSK in Japan and PSP in China. And both of them activate not only the guard cells, 
the early warning cells, but also um, the functioning, the production and functioning of a variety of B and T cell and killer cell types. Um, in animal studies, PSK and PSP have also benefited the digestive system, the liver, the pancreas, the heart, even the joints, because these mushroom glucans tend to be powerful antioxidants and tend also to benefit um, um, the support of healthy inflammatory balance. Just to show you, just to indicate how very important these are in Asia, um, they're widely used in Asian clinics and um, PSK can cost more than $250 or more for a 30 day supply. And the mushroom specialist will also tell you that it's really a good idea to have a broad array, a broad variety of glucans. So by having not only turkey tail, but these five other glucans, uh, including lentinan uh, from shiitake and so on, we're giving the immune system a, a really wide variety of glucans to increase, which increases the likelihood that various um, categories of immune cells in various, in all the various tissues will tend to want to become more activated as they pick up and respond to these glucans. Who can benefit from the smart rush rooms? In one word, everyone. We all need um, all the immune help we can get right now for obvious reasons. This is obviously um, the elephant in the room. And uh, the, immune, the immune system defends against all threats, foreign and internal. Um, the elderly, um, we can predict, um, will have um, lower immunity because um, as people get older, they tend to make fewer, they tend to make new immune cells at a slower rate and the immune system tends to become less efficient. People who are immunocompromised, um, whether they don't have a good enough diet, whether they have negative lifestyle factors, um, to, put it, um, to put it mildly, adverse effects of legal or illegal drugs. Many legal drugs can also impair immunity. Poor sleep, emotional stress, as Daniel mentioned earlier on, especially chronic long-term unremitting emotional stress, as he put it so eloquently people who have mood challenges, and practically every negative aspect of modern life tends to compromise immunity. And then for anyone who wants a better brain, so we can, by taking the smart mushrooms daily, we can um, not only um, help our immune system, but we're also helping our brain. How to use very clean, free from all the common allergens, um, free from any allergens really, because there's no additives, there's no hidden ingredients. Our supplier did a really nice job in um, creating these powders for us. And each scoop provides three grams. You can mix it into whatever liquid you like, into shakes or smoothies. Um, we recommend uh, that you take two scoops a day for the first few weeks, just to get things going. Uh, you can take two scoops or more on an ongoing basis, just as much as you like. And it's okay for kids as well. And there are really no limitations on, on, on you know, who can take this um, product and benefit from it. So in closing then, I would say that the mushrooms enhance practically every immune system activity. And they'll work better when you have sufficient supplies of vitamins and minerals, which are the nuts and bolts of life. And I look at all of this as part of our nutritional health insurance. So um, as chief science officer for BrainMD, uh, I'm really excited about the work that I'm privileged to do to assist so many people out there with having this kind of nutritional health insurance to have the highest quality of life and the greatest possibility of a long and happy lifespan. Thank you very much. Well, my goodness, that was just an excellent talk. And Daniel, uh, I always learn so much and always covet getting the slides. 
when you are done, it was just clear, easy to understand, thoughtful, and compelling. Um, you know, one question I have, can you put smart mushrooms into a shake? Is there any problem with that? Absolutely not. You can, you can put it in with anything else too, you know, and you can do anything you like uh, with this. It's, you know, totally innocuous. Um, you know, Jim did a really great job in, uh, in working with me to develop this formulation. Um, so this is really an excellent product. It's, it's far better than um, the immune products, the mushroom immunity products you'll find out there. So one question, another question that came up, and then we're going to have to stop. Um, what about people struggling with candida, which is another fungus that often overgrows and causes yeah. anxiety, uh, brain fog? Well, that's is where the phagocytes come in. That's where the phagocytes come in. The phagocytes pick up candida, hyphae. Uh, in the tissues or in the gut contents and just go after them. And if, if a few phagocytes aren't enough, they'll mobilize more. But the, the, the key to candida is zero intake of sugar. If a person has candida and they continue to consume sugar, it's going to be very, very hard to eliminate it, regardless of how powerful your immune system is. You've got to go to a zero sugar diet, and then the immune system can get on top of it. I also have to say this, that over my 36 years of experience, the candida story um, became really exaggerated. And everyone carries small amounts of candida, but it's very hard to assess whether a person has pathological levels of candida. And the, the, the really, good functional medicine experts will tell their patients to take a candida killing medication as well as support that medication with supplements. Um, but taking the smart mushroom product is not going to feed the candida. No, no, no. Quite the contrary. Quite the contrary. I mean, the mushrooms are a totally different class of fungi and, um, you know, they will power the immune cells to do their very best to attack candida. Great. It, these are not yeast. These are nothing like yeast or mold. These are a completely different category of fungus. These well, are food, food fungi, all of them. You did a great job. I hope uh, everyone else is as grateful to you as I am. So, all right, everybody, we'll be back next month. I think we're going to talk about anxiety next month because people have so much of it these days all right for brain md uh i'm dr daniel layman with my friend paris kid take care everybody thank you thanks daniel